the time has come that I must decrease that you might increase. I want to do something prophetic in bridging the gap between one generation and another generation. Bring me the song. And now you're standing on the stage of woman thou art loose. As I pass the baton, this is a divine assignment. The greater intercessor ever lives to make intercession for you to fulfill your mandate. Tonight I want to hand you over a sword which is a symbol of authority in the spirit. Whenever you lift up this sword, let heaven respond. And let heaven respond by lightnings, by thunder, by earthquake, by fire, and by mercy. But keep watching because it will make sense shortly once we connect all the dots. Hey, hello. I want to plead that you watch this video till the end. If you don't watch till the end, you will misunderstand what I am talking about in this video. Thank you and God bless you. All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. This is the End Time Truth Television channel. We urge you to subscribe to the channel, activate the bell icon by selecting all, so that the next time we upload the new video, you will be among the first persons to be notified by Google. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Till then, shalom. Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you doing? God bless you. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus. Uh, in the recent few days, the internet has been on fire as regards the incidents that took place in Ghana. These things has, have happened before. It's been happening before, but uh, the recent one that has garnered some kind of, um, of publicity and attention, you know, as it has not been recorded before, has been that which happened between Duncan Williams, uh, Joshua Selman, and um, Jerry Eze. Duncan Williams has handed out swords to people, and most of us didn't know it. At least not everyone of us knew that Duncan Williams had, in the past, given this sword to Anita Bynum, and uh, even the president that he spoke about, we didn't know that such thing happened until this video came out, and then, uh, you know, the suggestion from uh, YouTube and co. We're going to bring some related stories and then we've got to know that the Demo Democratic Republic um, uh, of Congo president also was a recipient of the benefits, in quotes, of the sword of the Lord and sword of the bishop. So this is how this has been happening and uh, not so many people have paid attention. Uh, even the one he handed over to his spiritual son in Ghana, uh, Dr. Asare Ogiri, you know, I saw it, but it did not generate too much attention. But once this was given to Selman and Jerry Eze, I would say two of the uh, the young, two amongst the, the, the young prominent ministers that are very, very popular. If you want to know how popular Selman is, wait on any day he is uh, doing a service in his um, church, go online, check his YouTube channel. Almost 40,000 viewers watch that live. So that is how popular this young man has become. So, and you see that, you know, with, with the popularity comes great influence and attention. So that is why this thing has been, you know, been like this. But there is something I want to show you. I, I, I want to show you the, the reason why the suspicion or the theory that uh, Duncan Williams is a, an, an occultist may never go, go away. Because even right from his childhood, he seems to have been bedeviled by some strange influences apart from the fact that you heard him talk about his father who was a free mason um legend now there are other things about him that you didn't know you know as it has to do with i never knew that about three of his fingers you know are not intact i, I never and i just discovered that recently and just like you also just like me you may not know but we're going to look at that and we're going to listen to him talk about his ring his bishop ring now we're looking at this not for any other reason, but just that we can compare things together. There was also a prayer that he made at the Potter's House dedication, which another pastor came and said that he made that prayer and dedicated the temple to Ashtoreth. We are going to look at these things together.
God bless you. So let's just dive into the video and uh, I will come back to talk to you. If I did not know that the hand of the Lord was on you, I would never do this. I so anoint you. And with every drop of oil that falls upon your head, may the strength and the power of the Almighty God rest upon you, rest upon your life. I hand you over this order. Let it bridge the gap between my generation and your generation. I will take my coat off my body and I will cover you because it's going to get cold and I believe that you are made of the stuff that it takes to step into your destiny and still let her step into hers. And I embrace you as my son. Who hands are lifted as the sword is lifted. Let the sword of God's deliverance be lifted over your lives and your situation. Today we decree, let the sword of the Lord make a difference in your life. Why are these false teachers so successful at what they do? Be because they're in cahoots with the devil. Why is Satan successful? Because his temptations, although they might appear noble on the outside, are in perfect accord with all the fallen, corrupt, selfish, proud, evil desires of sinners. He is so famous that Paula White, the spiritual advisor to former U.S. President Donald Trump... Now, we, we, we will begin from his um, union with T.D. Jakes. Now, T.D. Jakes has been also accused by so many and by the reasons of his um, association and relationship with some kind of people. And you know that relationship matters those that you associate with those, those that you dine and wine with you know defines who you are there is this old saying that says uh, show me your friend and i will be able to tell you who you are we've seen td jakes you know in the company of hollywood uh, superstars and these are guys that obviously everybody almost everybody believes that they are you know into satanism and recently um he was you know pictured uh, standing with pdd um when that one celebrated his birthday he was there actually and now these are the kind of union and uh, association that will never make the thoughts you know in the, the theory that td jakes himself belonged to these fraternities and coming to you know the fact that he is also a very close friend an associate pastor i mean an associate of of uh, archbishop nicholas duncan williams now it makes it grow thicker now a lot of you have heard this before from uh, the archbishop nicholas duncan williams about his father being a freemason just to remind you and for those that have not seen me before when i got saved and my father my father was a freemason and he was a grand wizard for the freemason and my dad had a snake in the house we're living in and he communicates with the snake and he was an ambassador he traveled and went to london and one of my bishops and now he's been with me for 40 years and uh, i said to him i want us to fast for three days and let's kill this snake now you know now before this there was something that took place in his life and that was how he lost three fingers as a very young child now listening and obeying the commands of a strange voice that he claimed was so intense and so influential over his soul that he placed his fingers on a flame that consumed three of his fingers. So I started having all these hallucinations, hearing voices, and one time I was in my room and I had voices and began to sense the presence of evil. And it was like I was overpowered by evil presence and I could hear them but I didn't see but I could hear them and then a voice said to me in those days we didn't have standby generators and any of those things so when your light went off you you lighted a candle so I had a candle and a match uh, in my room so the voice said light the candle 
I did. And he said, place your right palm on the flame. And uh, it didn't make sense, but it was as if I could not resist the power of the voice. And so I placed my right palm on the flame, and that is the result of this. I could see the flesh, you know, opening up and the bones popping out, and blood was all over the place. My lips were sealed, um, but I couldn't resist the command. And my hand was on the flame, and my hands was roasting on the fire, you know, and after a long time, the pain was unbearable, so I screamed and I shouted, you know, and I think the security head and called for uh, help. So they came and broke my door, and uh, when they came, uh, took me out, all the fingers were gone. And I ended up at the hospital for four months with all kinds of procedures and things to help me, and I will run out of the ward, they have to arrest me, bring me back, put me in chains, inject me to get me to be calm, to sleep, and uh, I was having all kinds of spiritual experiences. All right. Now, there was the, uh, the incident that took place. Um, you know, the next video you're going to watch, I was watching, I, I, I don't know what happened that time, but you're going to hear. And this made me also begin to think, is there a better way that Christians should handle, you know, their kind, their own? Is there a better way that we can actually handle, you know, um, our brothers and sisters that have made one mistake or the other? I'm not talking about those that are living in wickedness. I'm talking about those that maybe they, they took a step and the step was not the right kind of step that they should have taken and they fell into a dish. Is there, could there be a better way of helping them you know, um, standing up on their, you know, feet and they strengthening and they define them. Well, that this video is not for that, but when you listen to Duncan Williams talk about this, then you will understand where I am going. Now, this was a, a testimony from him, you know, um, according to him, when he was invited by T.D. Jakes to come and make some prayers um, during the dedication of the Potter's House. When Bishop T.D. Jakes invited me, to dedicate the potter's house that was the most difficult time in my life as much as it was a time in my life at that time i was contemplating suicide suicide i'm sorry suicide the thoughts were coming and i realized later on that it was a spirit that was assigned to mentally bombard me to give up living and when he invited me I was dealing with so much shame, so much shame and rejection that I decided I wasn't going to honor the invitation because it was going to open me up to too many questionings and things. And later on, I took all of myself and I said, no, I'll do it. As soon as I said yes, people started calling to the potter's house and saying, you can't have him. Do you know what is going on in his life? So Bishop Jakes called me and said, what's going on? And I said, why? He said, we're having too many calls coming in. Everybody is talking about you and all that was going And I said, the same thing I've told you. It's nothing new. He's the same old devil. The devil is fighting me and I'm also fighting him. And he's angry with me. So it's the same thing I've told you. There's nothing new. And he said, okay, that's fine. But it opened me up to all kinds of contradictions. And people were angry that in the midst of my shame and what they call defeat in my life i was invited to do such an honorable thing sitting there was the vice president of the united states and every big shot in the christian community was sitting there and when they called me to dedicate the potter's house ah, when i took the microphone i said lord Many are they that have written me off and have said there is no hope for me and that I am finished. They said politically, financially, religiously, I'm finished. There is no hope for me. But thou, Lord, have a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. And when I took the microphone, somebody stood up inside of me. 
Abdul Bahasa. Ilmu katala dayanda ku walahasi mei kita bahadakusa. And that prayer was about seven minutes. And that opened America up for me. That was it. Up to today, every invitation I've had for all major churches in America came from that seven minutes prayer. And that was the lowest times of my life. And it was the times of rejection and embarrassment and mockery. When everybody concluded I was finished And the experts in the kingdom The experts in the church Said I was finished But I understood As it is written Who is it that said A thing or predicts anything And it came to pass When the Lord God commanded it not Say I hear you Talking about this dedication and the prayer that was made At this um, You know the, the Potter's house dedication uh, Nicholas Duncan Williams there tells you that that was the seven minutes that changed his life. And it may also be likened to the seven minutes that have, uh, or that has added more fuel to the fire of the stories of uh, occultism or cult that has surrounded him, that has heaped some kind of pressure and created distrust and suspicion around him as you will hear Something that came out from that prayer, that seven minutes prayer, as it was attributory to courtism, as according to the statement of this man here, this pastor here. For years I've heard of Bishop Duncan, Bishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. I had the privilege to be a part of the opening of the Potter's House, and I remember it clearly. I was asked to read, to give the official with all the senates and everyone to read the New Testament reading for the official opening of the Potter's House. And I remember Carlin Pearson was doing Old Testament and Bishop Noel Jones moderated. And Bishop, Archbishop Duncan Williams was asked to pray the dedication of prayer. When he opened his mouth and began to pray, the potter's house began to shake with the fragrance of the anointing. I only heard prayers like that when I was growing up. He prayed, call the spirit of Astaroth and other names I didn't even know was in the Bible until I started reading it. We shouted for about an hour. We could care less who was there, what center was there. And the anointing came in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so blessed to have him tonight. He's in great demand. God is on his life. He has been a spiritual impartation to me. And I love him and I always will love him. Ruach Ministries and friends, put your hands together for Archbishop Nicholas Duncan William. Now, this statement is very, very strange. And this YouTuber, you know, um, has this to say about it. Wow, you can't make things like this up. A Christian pastor dedicates a Christian ministry to the spirit of Ashtoreth and other spirits? If you're familiar with Ashtoreth, she was a goddess of sexual perversions and fertility. It was the same idol or demon that King Solomon worshipped. And as a result, God took away his kingdom. Now, I just say here that this statement alone is enough to fit him into what uh, Pastor MacArthur said about some of these people. Now remember that, I'm not, I'm not here to hold brief for him, but I cannot speak on that prayer. I cannot speak on the prayer uh, of that dedication because I don't have the full video. But listen to what um, Reverend MacArthur said about some of the people who actually masquerade as men of God, in quotes, but inwardly Jesus says that they are ravenous wolves. This could be suitable, I mean, um, with that statement, I do say that Duncan Williams will, be, will suit into this de description. 
but with the avoidance and unavailability of the said prayer. It might be unfair to call him or to describe him as this, but there are many who actually fit in to what this servant of God here said. Why are these false teachers so successful at what they do? Be because they're in cahoots with the devil. Why is Satan successful? Because his temptations, although they might appear noble on the outside, are in perfect accord with all the fallen, corrupt, selfish, proud, evil desires of sinners. He is so famous that Paula White, the spiritual advisor to former U.S. President Donald Trump, considers him a spiritual father. He has raised thousands of spiritual sons and daughters globally. Everything that pertained to my eternal destiny, the original intention of God, has now come into my life in divine alignment. And that all happened as a result of my covenant connection and relationship to Archbishop, to Papa. Although some people see a peer-to-peer, -peer, I see um, my life would have been probably destroyed, my purpose, by the plan of the enemy, had Archbishop, my Papa, not stood in place. So, with the recent happenings of giving out of swords and all that, and the suspicion that had been hanging over Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Now, listen. Um, here, I'm not. I'm, I'm not taking any side. I'm not taking any position. I'm just bringing this to you so that you can, he, you know, listen to it, watch it, and then give your own opinion. Give your comment in the comment section. What do you think? And I, I want to ask you to, you know, be objective enough. Don't just follow the mind of the people. Now, I've told us in the video that I made about the handing out of the swords, I said that those things were, you know, uh, confusion. I mean, they, 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 they were there to cause confusion, and I think that those confusion, or the confusion that it is causing now, ain't actually necessary. And so, but that's not what I'm talking about here. Now, the, the theory and the suspicion that has been hanging over his neck is not going away. And, you know, I've talked about his relationship with T.D. Jakes, and now, handing out those things that makes it a little bit more difficult. And some persons have also alluded to his ring. I'm coming to that ring of a thing. Now, so when this uh, pastor made this statement about him calling out Ashtoreth, calling Ashtoreth and other things that he never knew was in the Bible, unfortunately, unfortunately, I went searching for the prayer. I want to see the prayer. And actually, the, the brother who did this uh, video uh, the unsealed truth, you know, was where I got this. And uh, I listened to this short cut out of those, of that prayer at the potter's house. And I didn't see the mentioning of that house being dedicated to Ashtoreth. Stand by that which was determined in eternity in the archives before time to declare the prophetic word. Now, Satan, hear ye the word of the Lord. Shockingly, it appears that he dedicated Potter's house not to God, but to Ashtoreth. Now, because I didn't see it, and I, I, you know, I don't know what was contained in it, please, if you have the complete seven minutes of that prayer, I would like to have it, because now, there is something that happened one day. You know, um, a certain pastor during the lockdown who was there, uh, unfortunately, um, he, he left to be with the Lord. And some person came, you know, somebody came to um, replace him, to take over from him. And so in the course of speaking, he made a certain statement that meant well. He meant well in the statement, but he stopped the statement halfway. Now, something like he was talking about being transparent in everything that he was going to do as a new person. He was explaining to us how transparent parent he was going to be. Now, what happened was that as he was saying it, he said, nobody knows tomorrow. And he said, look at this, the late pastor now, nobody knew he was going to die, that if he wasn't transparent in everything, including money. Now, that, uh, you know, he, he stopped it there. He stopped it there. So, at the end of the day, it appeared as if he was saying that because the man was not transparent about money, that was why he died. Now, when he finished, and I went to him in his office and said, please, the statement you made, you didn't finish it. Go and explain to the people because... After here now, you will hear different version of this thing, and you will be shocked. When did I say this? And he went and addressed it. But before then, somebody has picked up phone 
and has called one of the leaders that was not available that time to say, did you hear what such and such a uh, person has just said? That the man that died, died because he was not transparent with money. Now, but that was not what, what he was trying to say. So I would have loved to see this video to find out if Duncan Williams was praying against the altars, praying against the altars of Ashtoreth and not dedicating this temple to Ashtoreth. Listen, this video would have received more views if I if I had given it a topic, Duncan Williams dedicates altar to Ashtoreth. Now it will go far, it will go, it would go viral, but I'm not here to do this. Now, all these things, these things that I have shown you, you know, are more of the reasons why whether um, Duncan Williams belongs to any, any fraternity or not, the suspicion remains. It won't go away. And talking about his rings, this is what he has to say about the ring. You shake people, and as soon as you shake them, you can feel like needles going through your palm. Needles is going through your hand, and suddenly it's like one side of you is becoming weak. And immediately I have to shake it off and say, in the name of Jesus, fiery darts, come out, out, out. Name of Jesus, come out. Return to sender. And sometimes immediately you say, return to sender. The very person begins to do this. Very strange things. And sometimes it's coming from a ring they are wearing. Some people wear all kinds of rings that represents all kinds of things and carries all power. This ring doesn't have anything in it, so please. It's just my ring as an archbishop. It doesn't have anything in it. Amen. But you have to be very sensitive to the... All right, thank you very much. In, in a nutshell, I just want to say that I am not here to speak for him or against him. But the, the truth is that, you know, because people... Uh, before you bef before you make a mistake, let me help you. I'm not here to promote symbols and signs. I'm not here to promote prayer materials. I'm not here to promote you know all these spiritual things, anointed things. I'm not here to promote them. You know, I don't choose them, so I don't have any reason to support them, to promote them. Now, the thing I believe in is that the name of Jesus is enough. Now, but there is the there is there is there is a possibility. There is a possibility, potentially, that some of these old preachers are still dwelling in the activities of symbols and signs and materials that they found in the scriptures that are no longer relevant. And so they bring it, you know, fine-tune it, and are using it. Some of them are using it to make money. Some of them are, are you know, are innocently using it. Should I say in ignorance? I don't know if that is the right thing to say. But you know, I want you to be the one that will make your comment here. Do you think that, for instance, that it was possible that Duncan Williams could have dedicated the temple, the Potter's house, in the full glare of other pastors and ministers to Astorites? And do you think that because his father was a, you know, a free Mason leader, that he also probably had joined Freemason? What do you think was responsible for the spirits that was speaking to him, influencing him to get his fingers burnt? And as for his ring, I've read so many people saying that it is occultic. I'm not a bishop, but I know that right from my childhood, I know that bishops do wear ring. Is it occultic? I've not been able to prove that. The, 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 the apostles, none of them answered the tag bishop. Now, but it is in the Bible. So, I wouldn't know you know, I do not think the apostles ever wore or used any of these big materials uh, kind of to differentiate amongst themselves. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't think of that. But I think that this, you know, magnification of offices, you know, came in place when the church came under the supervision of the Roman Empire. That church became politics, that the bishops were like politicians today. Let me know what you think about the video in the comment section. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Till then, from me to you. Shalom.